Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Last time we found a treasure that we just handed over to Elder in Chief Bruver Hoog, and uh, we did get the Golden Froth card. I'm gonna check that out. And Golden Froth boosts ally, all allies on a row by four. That is really good, actually. Might even swap it out for the Mahakam Ale. It's gonna be better, I think. So, uh, there we go. So, we're heading towards the summit meeting still. So, uh, getting higher and higher up the mountain. The blizzard is getting worse and worse as well. Uh, there seems to be something over there, but I don't think... Yeah, I can't even access that. So, moving on. And there's bound to... Lyrians rode a narrow, winding path along the something. ridge. To one side were ice-covered boulders. To the other, a chasm hundreds of feet deep. It could have at least erected some barriers, complained Gascon, knocking snow from his cap. Got plans for that, Gabor said. Just need to decide how high to make them. What? Think. Should they be the height of your average dwarf or a human? The debate's gone on for 20 years. On the one hand, you've got... Gabor did not finish his discussion. He was interrupted by the Barbagazi that jumped down from the rocks. Hard chance! Shoot! Aim for on the belly! Neve soldiers made quick work of the lone monster. But the sound of battle spooked the horses harnessed to one of the wagons. Whoa there! Whoa! Damn it! The driver tried to rein in the animals, but could not. They dragged him into the chasm along with his cart and the soldiers riding him. They landed uh -oh. a few dozen feet below on a rocky outcropping. A moment later, Barber Gazis swarmed everywhere. So then we lose anything? Did you see how they fared? Anyone left alive? Asked me, leaning over the cliff edge. Worry more about their cargo. Gascon replied. They were also carrying chests of gold. Blast. We can't get down there. Too steep and the snow keeps falling. We can lower ourselves down a line. But without armor, shields, or heavy weapons. Otherwise it will snap. And the Barbagazis? The Queen said, brow raised. We shan't kill them with daggers. They're too thick of armor. We'll have to try. Or continue on our way. Okay. Well, attack the Barbagazis, I suppose. If that's a lot of gold and resources, we still need that. You only live once. Neve sighed. Gas gone. Round up some volunteers and let us move out. Moments later. The queen was lowering herself down a line straight towards the gaping maw of a Barbagazi. Her only armor, a woolen shirt. So this is gonna be a mandatory... No, it is a shortened battle to the rescue. Me's parents long refused their noble-born daughter lessons in the art of the sword. Yet nevertheless did she train in secret, wearing a blouse instead of armor, a kitchen knife in place of a sword, imitating the maneuvers she witnessed at nightly tournaments. Now. Forced to fight without proper equipment, her childhood exercises would prove more useful to her than she could have ever imagined. Eliminate the Barbagazi. Careful! No one try to be a hero! So, Frost on the lower row, and we have whatever this is. Every turn on turn start, if there is a unit on the right, gain a charge. Otherwise, remove a charge. If this unit's charge count reaches 5, Meath wins the battle. We start at... 2 charges. Which should be enough, I suppose. So a unit on the right. So let's just put a drummer there. Again and again. Get me going. And I guess I'll see you guys later. Oh. Every turn on turn start. If this unit has not taken damage since its last turn, move all units on the same row as fallen soldiers to the other row. As fallen soldiers. Oh, that is fallen soldiers. Okay, interesting. So with also Stunder, I can actually damage the two Barbagazis like this. And then use the regiment drummer to put a war wagon right Can't next to it. Anymore. And then we can use Barnabas Beckenbauer. See a local healer or wise woman. The other units. Transform a damage unit into a bear or play yeah, play two blitz units. There we go. We got another drummer. Army's a waste of time for one And more. another R blast, which will do about oh, five sorry. damage. There we go. So that's one Barbagazi taken out. And then we have 
actually enough to just take it out with another Arbalest. There we go. And that's it. That was pretty easy. We just needed enough firepower to take out the Barbagazis. But what's the catch? The sword and shield, Meave could not withstand a single blow. She thus danced atop the frozen snow, deftly dodging the Barbagazis' lightning-fast strikes, while delivering but a few well-aimed hits of her own to their eyes, ears, and gaping jaws. When the last monster fell lifeless to the ground, Meave walked up to the shattered wagon. The soldiers it had carried were bruised, frostbitten, but alive. Your Grace, we were sure you'd leave us. A good ruler never abandons her folk. Nor her goal. Gascon interjected, while securing a rope to a chest. That is interesting, because he just told us we couldn't go down the rope with heavy equipment. But a chest full of gold would have been a lot heavier than somebody in full armor. Soon enough, all were safely back on the path. And there we go, morale as well. The admiration Meave saw in her soldiers' eyes was in itself sufficient reward for her difficult battle. Seems actually really important that we did that, because of course we could have lost a hell of a lot of morale and respect from our troops if we didn't actually follow through on that. Another marker? doesn't give us much more than uh, an indication of where we are so I'm gonna go north here to that little village first and then we'll head south again we get some recruits and there appears to be oh look at that the the weather vane on top of this building is the logo for CD Projekt Red that is nice okay puzzle battle probably not a battle stone hearth Mindful of the intensifying snowstorm, Meave halted the march at a roadside inn by the name of Stone Hall. Waiting for a turn in the weather, Meave bided her time by playing a round of Gwent with the innkeeper. It appeared the residents of Mahakam played by a set of rules different from what humans were accustomed to in the lowlands. Destroy the stone's hearts, resident hero Guard rocks to. Units whose armor is reduced to zero are destroyed and every turn draw a card. Oh, this is hilarious. So they're, they're just mimicking hearthstones. <laughs> Funny. Okay. And yeah, so the cards even look different. That is cool. Stone hearts. <laughs> nice one. Nice one. So no ability. No ability. So that's the point. In hearthstone, you pull a card every turn. And uh, you have leaders that you need to kill. The goal of the match is to kill the leader. Golden Drake. Mana cost one. Draw a card. Either damage the enemy hero by Golden Drake's power. Or force Golden Drake's and, and an enemy to damage each other once by their own power. Okay. Professor Blast Wave. Mana cost four. And where do I see a six? Where's our mana? Ah. Every turn on turn start, the total amount of mana crystals increases by one. But where do I see my mana amount? Let's check out the rest. So Parrot Field Marshal, the Parrot from uh, Sultan. Draw a Pirate from your deck. Either damage the enemy hero by Parrot Field Marshal's power or force Parrot Field Marshal and an end. So that's the same like the, as the dragon. Surly Patron. I did damage the enemy hero by Surly Patron Sparrow for blah blah blah, so it's basically all the same. Sylvain Breeze. So those are, they're kind of imitating some of the characters from Hearthstone as well. So let's start with the parrot. Frickin' right! Okay, there we go. I still don't see... Oh, so that's the mana. That's the mana you get. Okay, okay, okay. So either damage or force pirate field marshal and an enemy to damage each shoulder once by their own power. And this one does very large wisp. <laughs> so now we have two. Which allows us to do this. And take out the very large wisp. There we go. Oh, so they bypass the armor as well. Interesting. Let's just damage guard and end the turn. There we go. Then boost this unit by the amount of damage taken by the hero on your side of the battlefield. There we go. That's 20. Then the patron, we can use that to damage. 
Him again? Oh, and we lost. Okay. We start. So I think we should play the Frost Giants once we're close to... Close to the middle of the match right about. So... One mana. Might actually just pass because I think I actually get... Ah, no. I can't pass. This is confusing because I've played Hearthstone and you can't play multiple cards if you have the mana for it or pass to save your mana. But apparently not in this one. So let's just play the cards and then the turn. And that will keep going with the Surly Patrons because the Surly Patrons will be able to kill off the dragons and use the parrot to just damage guard rock stew there we go then we don't boost just yet but just play another surly patron then we take out one of the dragons and do that getting more and more dwarves on our side of the field if you don't get killed by that, of course. So it appears to be the armor that actually decides what happens. So let's use the frozen giant. Use a surly patron on this guy and then on the hero. We lose one of those and we get five now. Spawn two blast balls. Don't know what that does. And then we can... Uh, yeah, let's just use Professor Blast Wave. Your wish. My duty. Then... And what does this do? Damage the enemy hero by a random amount between one and four. And we can't play multiple cards, so that's a waste, kind of. So that's that. And that's that. That they take each other out, and then I can do 15 damage over there. So if I can manage to... Oh. Did I just lose? Yeah, I did just lose that. Um, so four is not enough, but I have another frozen giant that I can use. That's that, and I can do four on... Shouldn't do it on Gart Rocks too, so let's just do it on the Young Drown Arm. And then the turn. Okay, and then the Blast Balls could actually finish this as well. Just gonna check what that actually does. If I just use that, I do another two random damage. Interesting. But yeah, this is down. Goodbye. So that was cool. That was Hearthstone in. Thronebreaker. So a bit of an homage. Blizzard added to our cards. I'm gonna check that out. Which is of course again, Hearthstone is created by Blizzard. Which is of course a very, very nice easter egg kind of. Spawn and play two random trinkets. Spawn and play two random trinkets. So we actually just swap out one trinket for two other ones. Uh, let's try that out. Seems a bit too random for my taste, but uh, we'll see. And then let's just gather around all the resources here and another chest. And it even has the Hearthstone. I missed that. Ah, there we go. Gabor's avatar. There's a Hearthstone symbol right beneath my character right now, right next to the inn as well, which is cool. Uh, Moving south. Got a blow before too long. Bring a rush down. Oh, up a shame ass. Raving the snow in those meager courts, are ye? Truly. <laughs> Thought of yourselves here for a spell before moving on. We got a bit of morale from that, but of course we were at max morale, if I remember correctly. La 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 la. La 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 la. Oh, an Ekimora or something like that. A vampire. Notice board. Which is pretty much, yeah, just a puzzle battle. So let's take a look at that. 
the remnants. The fact that Elder Brewerhoog had finished spring cleaning did not mean that passage was safe. Off the beaten track, amidst icy windswept ruins, beasts yet skulked, eager to ambush naive travelers who strayed too far from the road. Eliminate both the reckless and the shrewd vampires, do not let any more of your soldiers get seized and use your leader's ability. And we're still flicking. I'm gonna have to restart the game in a second because this is getting annoying. Shrewd Vampire every two turns on turn start sees the lowest unit on the opposite row and move it to your allied ranged row in the rightmost position. If there are already four units there, return the leftmost allied unit to the enemy side. Jesus Christ, that was complicated. A Meave can boost an ally by four and give it one armor then trigger all allies' loyal abilities. And this one is just boosting to five. So if I use my loyal ability to boost the Lyrian Harshduk, we get this situation. Which is probably even too high. Because if I now use a puppet, and then the turn, I already lost. Okay, okay. So I need to boost the puppet up. And that gives us that. But then I don't see how I... The lowest unit and the highest unit. Ah, but the lowest unit doesn't happen yet. It's just the highest unit. Okay. So I can do this now. Give him another puppet. There we go. Then, so now it's going to take the lowest unit. So I need to boost the Hashtuk. So I don't lose him. There we go. And the uh, turn. But now I'm going to lose the highest unit. Which I can't actually do anything against. So now, yeah, I lose my... Okay. So that means I should probably just play a puppet to start. So it takes a puppet. And then not use the leading ability right away. Now it's going to go for the lowest unit. So if I just boost... The Hushduk to 9. And the, the Sidemen to that. And put another Soldier Puppet down. I got this situation. Okay. Now it's going to go for the highest again. So let's boost my Soldier Puppet up to 18. And then the turn. And then if I just play another Soldier Puppet, it's going to seize that. I'm going to get my Wagenberg back. Which means that I can actually just... I can choose. Either I can play a soldier puppet over here to get him to four. Or I could actually just boost him as well. And that gives him another armor. But now I can destroy the two vampires. There we go. Okay. Good puzzle. Good puzzle. So there we go and get a whole lot of loot. Although it doesn't seem to be all that much. Just a little... Ooh, the workers' commission has determined that the nasty stench floating around Crag Pass gold mine is not, in fact, a fart, fault us or otherwise, but is caused by methane fumes. As a result, please heed the following. Do not enter the mine until the stench has cleared under no circumstances. Do not come within 30 paces of the mine's entrance with a flame and apologize to Valta for any inconvenience you've caused to her. <laughs> Poor Valta. Or fault, oh yeah, and the resources aren't actually all that much. That wasn't... That wasn't cool, guys. That wasn't cool. So moving on, we got another monster battle, it seems. There's two things. There's a monster battle over here, and then there seems to be a few dwarves over there as well. But let's check this thing out first. Standard battle, blood in the snow. Suddenly a piercing shriek came from above. Giving no chance to react, a large creature swooped down from the sky and plucked up an unfortunate infantryman. His blood was splattered across the snow, leaving a crimson trail straight to the beast's nest. So we did lose an infantryman then. That's nice. There we go, another forktail, a greedy forktail, and this is a standard battle, so I'm gonna have to be careful by not again, overplaying again, my hand here. Again. But, uh... Yeah, it's gonna be a standard battle with not much else to do, so I guess I'll see you guys in a second. So doing pretty well so far. Uh, we're gonna get a cavalry unit and another blitz unit that we can pull out. 
So just gonna take out the sightman and whatever was behind that. So it's just gonna be a capital remember. We'll be reaping black just to boost our hills. points a bit. And then we can do three, two, and one. There we go. And that should allow us to end the turn. And if he's not gonna play, if he's gonna play, ah, he's not gonna play a card. Well, might as well just use also Stunder now. I'm guessing we'll get uh, the Legion Blacksmith in a minute as well. So let's end the turn and pass. 88, 33, first round one with ease. And we did take a bit of damage. There we go, the Legion Blacksmith. Let's start off with the Pitfall Trap. It's gonna take the wind out of his sails as well. Use Meave just because. And put something fancy up top. Egg for example. And then the turn. Now, uh, I think I'm gonna go with the Grey Rider. And put him down. And then the turn. And then put a war wagon down. Like a wolf I am. There we go. He's taking out those units. Because my light infantry unit just died, so... That means... Oh my god, everything is dying. Uh, plenty of harpies. <laughs> well, if if you're happy, I'm happy. Uh, let's use another drummer. Army's wasted time for one. And use me to pull something else, an egg up top, maybe even an arbalest. We put everything on the same row, so arbalest should be fine. And turn. There we go. Then I can use the Lyrian Blacksmith to actually pull all the Stunder out again and damage the Harpy over here and the guys next to him. We get damaged by four, but that's on the correct unit. Oh, that wasn't a unit that was already destroyed. Sometimes the order in which things happen aren't, isn't that great. But Regiment Drummer with an Arbalest and Egg. So that's... Six damage, which is good for the fork tail, and then egg on the Barbagas. There we go. And stuff is getting killed again. Let's put his belt down. It's not too pulling the gray rider down away. as well. Then using uh, Golden Frot will be able to heal, well, boost all those units. And then I can play two Trinkets. Ooh, that's a biggie for... Uh... Yeah, that's a real biggie. So let's boost all allies over here. There we go. Use Meave. I put something really big up front. Might as well even just go for... Rivian Sapper, maybe? There we go. And the turn. And double use the blizzard to finish this off. With all units by four. Okay. Let's play those two trinkets. And that is playing two units and setting their counts to one. And then this, play a random bronze unit. Uh, okay. Can do this, I suppose. Come on. Just take the whole finger. And then harpies, uh, which means I can use the forager to take this light infantry unit with me and kill something else. Then I can actually end the turn because I got two extra cards. Cool. Oh wow, that just keeps going, doesn't it? 
I'm just gonna use these two cards to actually <sighs> put more drummers in my deck. Learns. To just pull all those in the in the last turn. I just wanna force him to play all his cards. Ow. That was enough damage, by the way. So let's just use this. Kill the Harpy Egg and get ourselves another Harpy. And then, yeah, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. Then I can use Meave to strengthen that one... Oh yeah, we pulled our cards, right. Just get another Regiment Drummer up there, so we definitely have a Drummer in our next turn. And then heal by 27. There we go. We might actually have won this just by doing that. There we go. And we won. Victory. Easy, easy monster battle. That Forktail got us ass whooped. So there we go. More and more resources. And we're gonna take a little break with that. Because uh, I've been going on for far too long. So uh, next up, we're going to check out those dwarves on the left there. But uh, before that, I'd like to thank you all enormously for watching. And I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker, The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.